We'd refined the process down through a whole series of sketches and we were getting closer and closer to our extended wheelbase land speed record bike. You had the CAD model that you were putting in with Total Sim, so we can validate a lot of the stylistic, if you want it, um, pieces that were on the bike. We had the hub centre steering, we were playing around with fins at the back to see what they would do. They, again, the appeal for me was we could do a sketch and then try it out in CFD. Yeah. Does that work? Does that help the Venturi come out the back? Unfortunately, the, um, the most efficient shapes are quite boring. <laughs> but that again is you the know, challenge. How do you make a boring shape, an yeah. interesting shape, or, or a, a package as a whole? So anything angular or sharp or sharp corners or anything that breaks or trips the air up in or around the bike is, 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 is generally a, a, a contributor to drag. So trying to create styling features or, or, or shapes which optimise the drag, uh, op, you know, reduce the drag as much as possible, but then still managing to keep, uh, you know, it's a massive challenge. We were trying we with these really. cutouts here to kind of avoid a big blobby nose, but they were just tripping the flow, weren't they? Both externally and within the duct, yeah. because it's not just the outside we're trying to smooth, we're obviously trying to keep the flow yeah. straight inside for that efficiency. I think the rider's heels protrude just a little bit inside the duck, don't they? Yeah, I think. But yeah, it didn't hurt, did it? We no, checked it. No, no, that was a that was a compromise that was made. Uh, you know, the rider in, on the land speed bike is is in a radical position. You know, there's you know he's more tucked. Absolutely yeah. tucked, and the feet are high. Is um, it that uncomfortable? Uh, it's uh, because the bike's made for me. Uh, I fit perfectly. You You're know, not I, a little I, chap. <laughs> I, I've, I've been scanned. The thing is, it doesn't matter, does it? Because it doesn't matter how tall you are, if, if you're, you've got the same frontal area when you're laying down. <laughs> Roughly. So, so you don't need a five foot rider. You can, you can be six foot two and you can still have a similar frontal area as long as your feet are behind you. Yeah. Um, so, but so, again, we're not, if we swung the legs down a little, shorten the wheelbase, we're yeah. back to our superbike package. I so mean, it's it, all doable. It's a radical position. Uh, the upper body actually isn't as radical as it looks if you if you look in motor three motor two or yeah. motor gp when you look at those guys when they're going down the straight their backs are flat they're as fat as they can be they tend to sit up on the seat hump don't they of course yeah so their upper body and torso are pretty similar to the riding position that we're carrying right now yeah the only difference that we've got is because we don't need to steer we don't we don't well we do need to steer but we don't Not need as to steer much. to the same no. extent as a circuit racer we don't need to push as much on our foot pegs. We also don't have any controls on our feet um, because uh, we've got front brake on the right bar, rear brake on the left bar, throttle on the right bar, uh, which means that then we can bring those feet up and tuck them in as tight as possible. Because the record braking bike was all about maximising the efficiency of the duct, wasn't it? It was to see, okay, a land speed record would be the real proof of the pudding if this is more aerodynamically efficient. What sort of gains were you seeing when you first did the CFD on the model? So when we first started off, um, I think we had, we were within, we took, we took the Hayabusa, Suzuki Hayabusa as a benchmark. As a, as, as a benchmark. Yeah. Obviously it's known well within the motorcycling industry to be an unusual looking bike, which has been um, uh, adopted by a, a cult group Yep. of high speed enthusiasts including myself i've got one and um and that is known to be you know one of the most aerodynamically efficient what's the drag cycles. coefficient of a hayabusa so a hayabusa would be it's difficult but i would say it's around about 0.36 with yeah. a rider on it yeah and we were looking early on with the early with the early models which were a feasibility study was done by total sim and we were looking at perhaps a reduction in drag by about 25 percent so that's phenomenal, isn't it? it By was getting massive. that cross-sectional area. Yeah, and it was worth. And at that point, you go right. Okay, this is worth pursuing. Yes. You know, you know when you work in motorsport and you work in in, in high-level motorsport, one, two percent, half a percent will give you a competitive is, is, advantage. Is worth having. Yeah. So if you've just come so. up with an aerodynamic device where you've found twenty-five percent, yeah, and it's definitely, definitely not optimized, then then there is reason to pursue it and see what it can do.